Hello everybody, this is Steve at SparkysAnswers.com. Coming at you today, I think today's April 26th, 2022. And we are outside on a beautiful day. Mostly sunny, a little bit of overcast, so we get a couple breaks with the clouds every now and then. And we're working on a 2017 Ford Fusion with a 1.5 turbo. And the problem we have, well, the customer complaint is that the engine stalls sometimes, and when it does, you have to wait a couple minutes for it to recrank. Um, I checked the codes on it, and the predominant code is a P1450, which has to do with um, vacuum bleed to the fuel tank through the canister purge system. Did a little bit of light research, and more than likely, it is a canister purge solenoid. It's pretty easy to test and there's a couple ways you can do it. You, you can look at data stream a little bit and figure it out, but it's why but get into all that when it's not that complicated. Um, what we want to do is we want to get the canister purge solenoid out and just try to blow air through it. We want to try and blow some air through it. And if, it, if air blows through it without any power or ground being connected to it, then it's bad. Um, and not really a big deal to, or to check out. The kind of strange things that I noticed about it when I, when I was driving it back here to the house to work on it is you're cruising along and particularly for some reason when you slow down to a lower speed, you hear a rrr, 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 and it's coming from the fuel tank area. Not for the life of me, Happen. I've never heard anything like that before in a car, um, but what it sounded to me like was some sort of a, well, you older guys have worked on cars with carburetors and huge vacuum hoses all over the way, everywhere. When you um, hear a, a soft rubber hose that's got vacuum on it, when it sucks together but not quite all the way, it gets that <laughs> noise, it kind of sounded like that. And in hindsight, I think what that noise was, was building up too much vacuum in the gas tank. And because it's a no cap gas tank, it's got a flapper door in it. I think the vacuum was actually popping that flap door open and making a noise and it would come and go. Um, I, I did a little bit of test by blocking the canister purge solenoid and drove it around and that noise is gone so that that's what my assumption is right now but for the, for the moment we're going to get in there and start looking to see what I did to actually test this thing and confirm that it was bad other than blowing through it and I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to look at the scan tools look at the codes and then we're going to look at the solenoid and the octopus of um, hoses that are attached to it and right now you can see there's a code P1450 colon 00-E8 and it says una unable to bleed up fuel tank vacuum and there's also a code PO51B OOEC and it says crankcase pressure sensor a circuit range performance which if you've got a vacuum issue on one line you could wind up with it on another it also has a code p162f and it says starter motor disabled engine crank time too long more than likely that was induced by a, a flood condition and the the operator of the vehicle at the time didn't realize that it was flooding and instead of just mashing the gas pedal to the floor so it would go ahead and clear and, and crank up, they tried to crank it until the computer said, nope, too long, we're going to go ahead and cut it off so we don't burn a starter up. But anyways, those are the codes. Hopefully you could see that okay. We might take another picture of this later. We're going to move on to actually getting to the solenoid and testing and checking. The first thing you have to do is to get this cover off and it's super easy. You just grab a hold of it and lift up and it pulls off the little detent pegs that are 
in assorted places. And we're going to move this out the way and try to get to the scent, the, the solenoid, which is down there, it's underneath the breather hose. Okay, and here is the canister purge solenoid. And as you can see, I've got a rubber cap on this fitting. And what, what was happening was you crank it up and air was sucking through there all the time. And also I took and wiped it off real good and I just puffed on a little bit and it blew air right through it so I knew it stuck open. And what I did further beyond that, as again a quick test, is I stuck a vacuum cap, a long one about the right size, I stuck it in the hose to seal it off going to the tank so I could drive it around. And once I did that, the stalling went away and the noise in the gas tank went away. So I'm assuming I was right about the just a vacuum building up in the tank and releasing with that um, flap door in the gas tank cover or the gas can, the capless gas tank fill tube. Um, get that out, right? But anyways, I've checked it out and now I just got to replace it. And I'll show you some of the things you got to do with the clips to get it, get it freed up out of there as you go. This one you can see. I had to, there was two little detents down here on the end and I had to push those in at the same time lifting up on this with the little screwdriver until it released and I could slide it right off. And here is the new solenoid assembly with the attached hoses. I guess they had some problems somewhere along the way or they just had a surplus of them so they wanted to sell them with the hoses attached instead of selling you just what you need which is that piece right there. Um, but what you're going to do and see how you buy the whole piece to, in order to get a warranty, you got to replace the whole piece. Yeah, let's get on to taking the old one off. We are going to squeeze this together and pull it up. And we're also going to lift this up, take it off. You're going to have to get that one off. See how we're going to do that. Looks like we need to probably take this clip loose. I'm going to flip it there. And that gets it loose there. We have to squeeze this back together again. Like we did on the other one. And that one's loose. And all that's loose. So now we're going to move over to these two fittings over here. And what do we got to do here? We got to take these red clips off. I believe they're going to be some sort of a lock. And then we got to push that in and pull it up. Squeeze that in again. And pull it out so all that's loose. Now we've already taken that loose, so that's not a big deal. We can just kind of see what we got to do here. We're going to have to pull this piece off, it looks like. And like I said, we got to take this hose off, and I've got this special tool pair of uh, hose clamp pliers that work real well. I got that loosened up and I'm gonna pull that loose. It's a little sticky, but not too bad. And that allows me to pull this hose assembly out from underneath it. And I can discard it. Well, that was about a catastrophe. That stupid clamp is, or that bracket, that piece of plastic down there has broke the holes of hood and prop rod. And the hood just fell down on top of me, all the parts, my scan tool, everything. So that's kind of kind of depressing, but nothing's worse for the wear. Ho, ho, ho. But anyways, I've got all that loose and out of there. 
and I need to look at the bracket and see what I got to do about bolting it down. And you know the God's honest truth, I think I'm going to use the old bracket and save myself a little bit of time and trouble. Because there's nothing wrong with that piece of steel. Where is it at? That piece of steel is just fine and all I got to do is pull the, the new bracket off the new solenoid and just stick it down on there and it'll be just fine. This is the bracket I was referring to on the, um, on the new piece and all I'm going to do is just slide that out of the rubber and then we'll slide it back on the, old, the new piece of steel, I mean on the, on the old bracket. But I'm getting everything positioned in place and this is the new solenoid. I'm going to put it on the old bracket and it goes on there just like that. I'm taking my rubber vacuum cap out of there. Take my rubber vacuum cap out that I had plugging off the line. Get it out. Now I can plug this hose up to the solenoid. And then after I'm sure that I've got it in place, click the, the green lock in place. And then I can reach down and put the electrical connector on. And we're pretty much done down there. Now, now they want you to change this thing too, and that's a pain in the patootie. But I guess that's not so bad. Let me just take that bracket off so I can look like I did something. Well, on this one, I'm going to go ahead and change the bracket because there's it's a little bit less complicated to do that, strange that it seems, and it shouldn't just take but a minute. I take and pop this one hose out. Yeah, just pop it out, right? And I'm taking that one nut off so I can change the bracket out with the hose assembly on it. Now I did notice that that boulder with a stud on it did turn a little bit, so I'm going to take a snug it back up real quick. And I'm guessing that's a, probably going to be a 12 millimeter. Well, I would guess wrong. I'm guessing that's that's a 13 millimeter X on that stud. Like I said, I just want to snug it up the hair from where it rotated loose. Just want to snug it up just a hair from where it rotated when I took the, the outer nut off and that should do that and even with all that I still had to take the new new clamp assembly loose so I can get everything together in the proper order because this has got to go back behind that hose so that hose can go in that bracket or retaining clip and that goes there and this goes here so I put it on there so it'll stay in place And I'll reach down here and put this nut on. Now we've got all that back on. And something I guess I should point out. See that slot right there above the, the bolt hole? It goes around that piece of plastic. You can just barely see it right there. Um, but you got to be careful, or you should be careful, that when you go to tighten it up, this bracket doesn't want to walk on you and try to tear that ear off. So just an extra step that's probably not in a book anywhere. Now, I didn't even know it until I just tried it. Let's see now. We got that under there. And we are going to snap those on over here now. This one goes down here. And this one goes right there. And you do that and you gotta push the red clip in to lock it. Let's see, the next step is we'll slide this hose back on. It's gotta go between these other ones. 
slide it back on there ever so gently. Kind of wiggle it around, and make sure that it's fully seated. And what I'm going to do is I got to squeeze this tool and expand that clip a little bit, the clamp, so I can slide it up on there, and she's right in there like she should be. Now I want to go back around here and look to make sure everything is the way it should be right here. And that bracket looks good. That hose looks fine. And I'm going to bend that up just a little bit. Ah, that makes me happier. It seemed like it was laying a little bit too close to those um, transmission lines or maybe those are air conditioner lines. Let's see. The power steering well it's some sort of lines um, but it looked like it was laying a little bit too close to that and the transmission has been out of this so you could expect something to be a little bit out of whack and chances are even though the solenoids go bad all the time changing the transmission out didn't help that solenoid at all I'm sure Whew. now Double check to make sure everything's clipped in place. Lock down. Everything's right there, right there, there. It's right where it should be there and there. Clipped and locked. That is clipped and locked there. So all that is good. Is that a clamp right there? Yeah, that clamp right there should have been hooked up, shouldn't it? And this, that clamp right there should go where? Oh, the joys of working behind somebody else. Well, I was thinking that hose might go up there, but it's clipped down there. So where would it go? Certainly it wouldn't go down there anywhere, would it? Some things that have always amazed me about working on cars and particularly when you're going back behind somebody else and i'm not saying what they did had anything really to do with this problem but it's just a little things that got overlooked while in the process of them doing their work one of the first things i noticed and it's kind of hard to see but there's a, a plastic clip right there that holds a, a rubber vacuum line to a to a rigid vacuum line and it was stuck over on this side and had nothing else to go to and i was trying to figure out when it went where it went and i came around here and realized well that's the clo closest place where two are together and it must have originally been there and then just slid down and i also noticed this hose clamp was slid all the way back here so you couldn't see it and it needs to be up here and back on the fitting when it's in place and the last thing i noticed well, it was actually one of the first things, but the last thing I'm talking about is this um, wire tie retainer for this harness right here. It's broken, right? No big deal. But why not take the time to just replace it or fix it? It's not that hard to do. I happen to have an assortment, because I've been doing this for years, of wire ties with Christmas tree um, retainer tabs on them and this one will probably work just fine for that but what i'm going to show you is on the one that's broken what i have to do is pull that through what i have to do is pull that that old one out and then you can slide just a new regular wire tie in there you see i took the the old piece of wire tie out of the retaining tab that goes down in the hole and I'm going to wind up putting a new wire tie in its place and use that old retaining tab. It's not a big deal and anybody can do it and it only takes like five minutes and maybe a nickel and it makes a difference between a wire harness laying where it should or rubbing on a bracket like that where it eventually rubs a hole through and shorts a wire out. You see I now I've got the new wire tie in the old retainer looks very similar to the one I buy and keep but I 
think that um, push in tabs a little bit different and this one will be just fine and I'm just going to stick it back down in there I'll loop my wire and harness back across it like it's supposed to be got to do some rotating get some finger motion going there And now I can work on getting everything lined up just right. And another one of my pet peeves of people taking a pair of pliers and clipping it off right there because you wind up with a very sharp edge that will cut you every time you got to work past it. So they do make a special tool for this, but razor blades are cheap and we need them for a lot of things. So I just cut it off and make sure it's nice and smooth. And that way I won't ever get scratched on it again. I just got to find that piece that fell off and get it pulled out and I can finish buttoning this thing up. The kind of shame of modern technology is that with the changes and so-called advances the motors are getting noisier and noisier all the time so they make these thick foam covers to go over them and, and quiet down all the clicking and clacking that you hear right now it doesn't make it all go away but it does make it better but remember it wasn't too long ago just a, a decade or two that the cars were getting so quiet you could hardly ever even hear the motors running anymore but like everything else, it's changing and probably not for the better. But definitely better than what we arrived with. Things, a couple things were fixed that were messed up. And um, hopefully the main problem is fixed. I'll have to clear the codes and test drive it a few times to make sure nothing else comes on and, and it doesn't stall anymore. And hopefully that wraps this one up.